has his Cardinals team on point right now. With a potent offense and a playmaking defense, they appear to be the team to beat in the NFC right now. After thumping the Niners, the Cardinals have now outscored their opponents by 77 points in the team's first three games. Four of the five teams since 1980 to accomplish the same feat went on to play in the Super Bowl. So according to FPI, Arizona has better than a 50% chance to win each of its remaining 13 games. Skip, you just heard all the numbers. Yep. Are the undefeated Cardinals a threat to really win the Super Bowl this year? Stephen A., we got to meet Bruce Arians, you'll recall, at the ESPYs a couple of years ago. Spent a little time with him. I really like this guy. Yep. I so think he I. might be the so best I. offensive mind in pro football. And what he is doing with a later career Carson Palmer and now a later career Chris Johnson is just sensational. And Larry Fitz. And Larry Fitz, that's another good one. He, he's, they're revitalized, yep. all three of them, at advanced ages. I, I can't get sold on this team as a Super Bowl threat because it's built, to me, upside down. The offensive line's just okay. Might be even a little below average. The defensive line's below average. The front seven on defense, not great. But boy, you get to the skills positions, obviously on, on offense with the quarterback who's playing at an extremely high level right now, even though we don't have a great measuring stick because the opponents have been that New Orleans struggling defense in week one, Chicago struggling offense more in week two, and then the suddenly really struggling San Francisco defense this past Sunday. And I don't know yet, not sure about that, but they can score and score quickly because of Chris Johnson, that little kid David Johnson they have at running back. I love Ellington, he can't stay healthy, but if they get him healthy, they're gonna have a real deep firepower at running back. They have a deep receiving core. You mentioned Larry Fitz, John Brown, and it just gets deeper and deeper. They can flat out score the football. And on defense, there is no more potent cornerback safety combo than Patrick Peterson and Tyron Matthew. It's just sensational what they can do. You can have Richard Sherman and Cam if you want to, but these guys are right there, if not a touch ahead of them. So I, but they're built kind of from the, the back end up that when, when you get to the forward half of the offense and the defense, it's not great. And I look at Carson Palmer's record. He's 0-2 lifetime in the playoffs. And in Arizona, he did beat Seattle at Seattle in a Week 13 game two years ago, a game in which Carson Palmer threw four interceptions, and they somehow won that game 17-10, to 10, and I don't know how they won it. But he has managed not to face Seattle, since then, and now if he stays healthy, God bless him, the rest of the way, he's going to have to go to the Seahawks on November 15th. They also go to the Steelers before that. Then they close with Ad Eagles, then uh, Packers on December 27th, which could be a great matchup, and then Seahawks at home on January 3rd. Could be another great matchup. I, I want to see Carson Palmer against the premier competition because we haven't seen a lot of that in his time being upright in Arizona. He lasted six games last year, and they really didn't play anybody of note in those six games. So I just need to see a little bit more. I root for Bruce Arians. I root for Carson Palmer. I, they're fun to watch, but are they built to last? I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not sure about that. Skip Bayless, I'm with you. I'm not sure about it either, but I think I'm a tad bit more positive about them than you are because where you and I differ is that you think the offensive line is so-so. I'm not willing to go that far. I'm willing to give them a little bit more uh, more props than that, whether it's this kid Cooper, whether it's Val, they only gave up a sack last year. I mean, I'm just looking at some of these guys, and then Uapati they got in the offseason. I believe that's how you pronounce yep. his name. Mm -hmm. Consider this, Skip Bayless. You have a situation where Carson Palmer has only thrown one or two interceptions on the season. He's only been sacked one time in a trio of Ellington, and he's got to get back healthy, along with David Johnson and Chris Johnson are each averaging better than four yards a carry out of the backfield running the football for this team. So if you give me an offensive line and you show me that every running back is averaging over four yards a carry, and you combine that with the fact that they've only surrendered one sack on the year, 
I got to give props where props is due. I said Carson Palmer only threw two interceptions. It was two interceptions that he's only thrown. He's already thrown nine touchdown passes, which brings in another uh, another guy's name into the equation. Larry Fitzgerald mm -hmm. came out of nowhere. He's usually your wide out. Once upon a time, one of the elite wide receivers in the game. But Bruce Arians had to sit down and have a talk with that man to let him know that father time, age, attrition is catching up to you just a little bit. I still can utilize you and make you a vital component of this offense, but you need to roll with what I'm trying to do. So now you see Larry Fitzgerald playing more in the slot, more so than he's playing on the outside. When you can look at that, and then you notice that he's got 28 receptions. I mean, what is it for here? Let me look at this number here right here, Skip. He has five he's got 28 receptions for 333 yards, averaging 14 and a half, half yards a catch. We, did, we didn't think that we would see those kind of numbers from a Larry Fitzgerald again, but that's what we're seeing. So if you've got Larry Fitzgerald with a John Brown who's got 17 receptions all of himself, and then you look at the trio of running backs, and you look at the fact that Carson Palmer can fling that football, particularly long range. Granted, first three games, New Orleans, 31 points. Chicago, 48 points. San Francisco, 47 points. We'll see what's going on. But when you talk to all the NFL experts, which I do constantly, particularly on my radio show, what they say to me, Skip, is this. Every time I bring up the Cowboys or I bring up Green Bay, they always say, don't forget Arizona. These guys went into Seattle couple of years ago when they weren't the same team beat Seattle they're not scared of Seattle they look forward to going up against Seattle and anybody else you know from last year how they walked into Dallas and they beat Dallas last Brandon year Wheaton. so when I look but at it from ahead. that perspective yeah. that's right that's right that's fair that's fair but when I look at that what it forces me to say is what if they win enough games where they had some games in Arizona when it counts with the offensive brilliance of a guy like Bruce Arians mm -hmm. and those corners. Because when you got Peterson and, 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 and Tyron, mm -hmm. I don't think you can summarily dismiss this team. They are playmakers. And even though Colin Kaepernick ain't the greatest example because he looks to have regressed to yes. pick six him that early on two occasions, two. Yeah. early in the game Sunday, tells me that you have – an elite secondary oh, elite. that's yeah, going to require an elite really quarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what I'm saying, y'all, is that an elite quarterback is going to have to beat them, and that's by playing elite, not just being elite. You have to play elite against them, and that's what I think makes them very, very interesting. Okay, so your Super Bowl pick is Seattle. So what's Salem, going to happen uh, Seattle. at Seattle on November 15th and at Arizona on January 3rd? What happens in those two games? Well, uh, well, I, well I, I believe they split. I believe that they lose one game and they win one game against Seattle. I definitely believe that, but I'm not wavering from my pick that the Legion of Boom will go back to will go back to the Super Bowl because I believe that whatever mission Tom Brady and the Patriots are on because of the Flate Gate, Seattle is on a bigger mission because they believe they gave away a Super Bowl when Pete Carroll made the worst call in NFL history okay, by not giving last, Marshawn last Lynch early the ball prediction. a half yard away. That bad man on December 27th plays at Arizona a couple days after Christmas. Is it a Christmas present for you? Is it is it does Aaron Rodgers win that game, or does Arizona win that game? I, I, would, I would favor Arizona, and I'd like you to keep in mind, I am an Aaron Rodgers fan, not a Green Bay Packers okay. fan. I think that Aaron Rodgers can play at an elite level and still lose, and I think that's definitely plausible against Arizona. Okay, so it sounds like you have Arizona losing only a couple of games, maybe. I think Arizona's got a chance to go 12-4, 13-3. and mm -hmm. I think they're going to really battle nip and tuck with Seattle for the NFC West, and I think Seattle is behind the eight ball because they lost those first two games. So they're already two games behind Arizona, and because they're going to split, they're going to remain two games behind, so Arizona is going to have to lose two additional games, all right, preferably within the conference in order to pull out the NFC West. Um, and I think that's a really, really hard sell at this particular moment in time to assume is going to take place. Okay. I'm just saying no Super Bowl threat here okay. in Arizona. All right. They had double digit I think they're a threat. I just don't know if they'll get it. They had double-digit wins last year with three quarterbacks, so I certainly think they're a team to watch. And I'm with both of you. I'm looking forward to seeing this team against some elite competition mm -hmm. and see what they do. After the break, more.